Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. I just can't believe this happened to him. I don't know if it did. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. I don't know if it's ever heard of him. I'm just thinking about the renovation of her. She said it for 12 years. She did it. She touched him in his head. Still just this shock of all this that just happened. I just, I don't know what to say, but I do know that he did a number of things. He did a number of miracles. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now, I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, where they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city 
and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met the elders and devised the plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Therefore, and the Lord said that we are to go forth and make disciples, spreading the gospel to all the nations, baptizing them by way of the Holy Spirit. And so I stand here before you. I stand here before you as a living witness that Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, has risen. He hung on the cross, yet, yet in three days he rose. Isn't that joyful? Isn't that joyful to know that our Lord Christ Jesus has risen from the dead? That he defeated death? That, that power, that same power is on the inside of us. And so therefore, if he has risen, we too can rise from our graves. We thank Lord, our God, our, our Father. We thank our Jesus for rising up again. Today is the day we celebrate Jesus. And all, I just want to say, Lord, all I want is you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. This is the altar now. Whatever you have in your heart right now, I want to pray for you right now. Pray down this anointing upon this place right now. Whatever you're going through, I'm trusting and believing God is hearing our prayers. Amen. I'm believing. I'm believing my faith with your faith. I have great faith. I have great faith. I believe <laughs> just by the spoken word, the spoken prayer, this 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 rendering unto God today. Hallelujah! That He'll hear from us. He'll heal our head. He'll heal our bodies and our minds, our emotions today. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. I just saw an article flash by and it says here one of the major Wall Street or one of the major news outlets. And it says, why is there so much poverty in America? America now is asking the question, why is there so much poverty? Uh, some of us, some of us have been generation after generation after generation after generation of poverty, going back some 400 years of, of poverty from a generation before us, multiple generations before us. But I'm here to tell you today, hallelujah, I'm here to tell you today, there's a chain being broken. If you just trust and believe that God is still the master of our faith, the master of our destiny, and he hears and answers our prayers. If, if you believe that, remain obedient to what he has for you. Ah, I was talking to a pastor just a couple weeks ago, Pastor Justin. He said, well, God is rewarding us is for our obedience it is your obedience that God wants. He's, he's not, and whatever he asks of you to do, he's asking you to do it, even though it may hurt you sometimes, even though it may be an embarrassment to others who look in sometimes, even though it'll make you laugh, but whatever you're going through, God is saying, I am, I reward you for your obedience. So today we pray. You want to think about how Jesus came and how grand and great that he was in heaven, but he came into earth, being God's only son, only son, 
coming into earth and taking on our broken flesh to show us the way and how he was obedient unto death. Who he didn't have to do it. So regardless of what you're going through, just know and believe Jesus didn't have to do it, but he was obedient unto death, which led to the end of his resurrection because it was a promise that God had that had to be fulfilled, that the Messiah would come and be buried in the grave for three days and to rise on the third day. He had to do it. No matter how they spat upon him and, and how he may have felt embarrassed, those who followed him were embarrassed by what he was going through because they knew how great he was, but still, he was obedient. So be obedient in our walk with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your grace and your mercy, for your awesomeness that you are, Lord. You didn't have to stop by, but yet and still you did, because you have a promise to keep, that you will be with us to the very end of the age, that you will never leave us alone. So we call on this Holy Spirit today, Father. Fill us with your anointing. Fill us with your power fills with your love, fills with your grace today, dear Lord. Hallelujah, God. Let mercy be all around us. Ah, more grace. Same grace. Same grace, dear Lord, that uh, they walked with Jesus and the disciples. The, the same grace that met the two women at the tomb. The, the same grace uh, that lifted him up from the grave. The same grace, dear God. Uh, all the world for me is the same grace. Surrender so unto us today, Father. To so those who the Lord need a healing today, they need you to be Jehovah Rapha. Meet them at their crossroads right now. Hallelujah, God. As we come before you, we raise a level of expectation to a place of great faith. So heal their bodies, heal their minds, heal their spirits, Lord. Dry up cancer, dry up asthma. How? Release the nutrients to dry up diabetes, dear Father, today. Or blood, Lord. High blood pressure to a place of normal. Hello, cholesterol to a place of normal. Be that uh, ram in the bush for us, dear Father, in a time of need. Let us not go with the lack of anything, Father. Let us be in uh, fill the abundance of you, of your prosperity that is in heaven. Let us experience here on earth, dear Father. While the world is asking why there's so much poverty, let us say, oh, because we don't believe. But we believe, dear God. So we break generational curses to the earth this morning. We break generational curses of, of poverty and lack, dear Father, this morning. We release anointing of, of overflow today, dear Lord, of prosperity, Father, into their lives. Because of our obedience, dear Lord, we know and trust that you'll keep your word. And you'll continue to pour down blessings upon us. But keep a head of protection around us, dear Lord. And no hurt, no harm come against us. Yes, weapons may be fired. Yes, arrows may be thrown. Um, arrows may be shot, darts may be thrown, Father. But you say no weapon formed against us will prosper. So let the haters hate. Hallelujah. Let them hate, dear God. And uh, what we say upon the promise that our, our enemies will be our footstool. Hallelujah. To the promises that you have for us today, Father. And we thank you now for these things in advance. Let the words that come from our mouth, meditation from our heart, be acceptable unto thee. Uh, my Lord, my Savior, my God, today, speak to me, dear Father, that the people may, be, may hear from you. Place me upon the Father's will. Spin me around with thy hand. Form me as the man of God you called me to be for this reason, for this season, for right now. Pour out a fresh anointing upon me, Father, and breathe the breath of life into me, dear Lord. So when I speak, Father, I only speak with the words you've given to me, but these your people, Father. And I thank you in advance right now. I decrease, dear Lord, that you may become great. I shrink, dear Father, that you may be the only one seen. You be the giant, and I'll be the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We say, Amen. 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 I'm enthused today. We're going to continue from Psalm the 23rd chapter. And we're going to do a Psalm 23rd chapter, but it's really, but we want to spend some time also just reflecting on who God is at these terrible times. And like I said, they're asking the question, why is there so much poverty in the land? I want to continue this. Don't pitch your tent in uh, the valley. Don't pitch your tent in your valley. Huh? Part two. <laughs> it's doing some amazing things. And I was just thinking about pondering about this question of why is there so much poverty 
in America. And there's so much wealth right now in America, but still today, there's about 14 states in the next couple of weeks are going to drop Medicaid. They're going to drop Medicaid. They're going to take people off of Medicaid. Medicaid was input was put into America and expanded largely around the pandemic. But now that's coming to an end. Most recently, they just did, they, they cut out the assistance for food, food assistance in America. They, they cut out food assistance in America. They are, are, are taking away those things that, 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 that kept us, uh, the safety nets that America put into place to, to alleviate some of the pains of being impoverished. So now, there's now not just a war on drugs, but there's a war on those who are in poverty. Our nation is struggling because we have a former president going before for, for legal, illegal activity, so they, uh, uh, they say against him, we don't, he hasn't been tried yet, but, but there's Americans at a crossroad right now trying to identify themselves. In America today, in America today, we're witnessing how China and like Brazil are now not going to use the American dollar for trade anymore. They're going to use their own forms of money to do trade, which is abnormal. In the past, it's always been the U.S. dollar that was the strongest, and you wanted to trade with the U.S. dollar because you could trust it. Now the world is not dependent upon the strength of even our U.S. dollar. Decades ago, they, they stopped putting the dollar up, up against the gold. No longer is the, is the dollar secured based upon how much gold that we have or the, the value of the gold in Fort Knox. That day is now gone. We, as a nation, are in some troubling times. We are in some troubling times. One thing I know for those of me, us who come from the shores of West Africa here in the Americas, that we've been in some troubling times for hundreds of years. And we're still here. Sometimes you got to think back over your history to, re to remind us that we've had hard times. Most of us. Forever. It's just new in the last couple of decades where we're flourishing. Do you know and then when the NBA first started, they couldn't make a living to take care of their families with what they're being paid in the NBA. It's new to become a multi-multi-millionaire playing basketball. That's relatively new. That's not 40 years old. That's not. Magic Johnson came into the league making a million dollars a year. He was the highest paid player. So being a multi-millionaire playing basketball, playing any sport, is still kind of irregular. It's just now becoming more common. So that's what we see. But quite often what America shows us is those things, are those athletes and those other individuals. But, uh, but, so, but then we give us a sense of like, well, we're making it, but quite often, no, no, for real, what is happening is the vast majority of us are living check to check or living or barely living at all. It's now very common to find somebody who is homeless or homeless challenged. Meaning that they go from couch to couch and home to home, but they not necessarily homeless like you see on the street, but they're homeless because they can't afford the rent. We're challenged in America. We're challenged. But there's a bright day. There is a bright day. So we celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus today. We celebrate how he came and Made things happen. We celebrate the goodness and greatness of our Lord and Savior Jesus for him being obedient unto death. But I want to start with Psalms, the 23rd chapter. There's something positive that it's going to be rendering unto us. We are in the midst of a valley as a nation. Psalm, the 23rd chapter. It reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. 
You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love, and rooms and goodness and mercy, will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> Go back to those just a little while ago. They had seven days, seven, seven last words of Jesus. And, you know, those, those words, those phrases, uh, those things that are part of Jesus rendered unto us for historical purposes to lift us up, to ignite us, to draw us into memory of what he was going through leading up to the cross and on the cross and being delivered from the cross. Jesus and on the cross went back to the Old Testament. So you have to go back to the Old Testament to see whence we come from to tell us where we're going. And I, I, I can see Jesus now when he uh, said, the Father people, they know not what they do. I can see Jesus now saying, uh, uh, I thirst. I can see Jesus now praying upon this cross. And he's coming to his darkest valley. He's coming to his darkest valley where death is coming. I was talking to a man this past week and had a very interesting conversation. I was in South Carolina. And I'm not used to this. I'm a West Coast guy out in California. And my California friends, we actually get together every month for a Zoom call, about 16 of us. We all grew up together in junior high and high school. And in the outside of Los Angeles, I mean, and they are baffled by the conversation about weapons here in in in, in the South. And I'll let them know this most recently that in the South they now made it so that you don't have to go to the sheriff to get a permit to purchase a handgun anymore. Now all you have to do is you said had your federal background check, but now you do it at the gun store. You do it at the at the gun the gun show. You, you don't have to go to the sheriff anymore for your background check. They want to make it more accessible for people to easily get weapons in their hands. I was talking to a man in South Carolina. He was with his family. And he was so, uh, like, and just so enthralled with the fact that he had these weapons and how and he had 5,000 uh, rounds of ammunition and he was keep just in case uh, there's something would arrive in America. He was concerned about uh, the prosecution of uh, our former president. And he was telling me these things as though I wanted to hear these things. And he said, mine shoot a, a 226 caliber. And I said, interesting to him, I said, well, uh, well, mine shoots a 223. He was like, whoa. Were you in the military? I said, no, I sort of the State Department. <laughs> what I was saying to him was like, you know, in this day and age, we understand that you are preparing for something radical. But there is yet a God. We're all in this together. We're all in this life together. We are interdependent upon one another together. Here in America and around the world, we're all in this together. We should be prepared together, live together, love together. But there will be come, there will come some times where you will enter into a dark valley. Don't pitch your tent in the valley. I was talking to everybody who said from hill to hill, from mountain to mountain, we had these glorious experiences where we are like Right in the glow of God's glory. We are experiencing the highest of highs with Him. We are feeling the warmth of the sun like we never experienced it before. I have cousins who live in, in Denver and friends who live in Denver, and I've been to Aspen a few times. And, and I'll never, you know, when you when in, in, in the highest, on the high mountain, you're a mile high, they say, a mile high city. We're in the highest high. There's something about the sun that's just how closer you are to the sun that you actually experience the warmth of it more. And Denver, when it snows one day, it can be a blizzard 
in the morning, by the afternoon, when the sun comes out, you can't even tell it was a, a snowstorm in the morning. Because the sun is just that bright. When you're on top of a mountain, when you're a mile high, there's God's glory, his sun, his sun, and reflects his glory. It's so bright that even if the storms come, his glory takes away on top of the hill the storm in your life. The snowstorm is moved on because of God's glory from the sun. In life, you will have some storms that will come, and it'll be like that snowstorm in Denver. It'll be a snowstorm that's snow is so high, you don't know how you're going to get through this, this problem. You don't know how you're going to get out of poverty. You don't know how you're going to get out of this broken relationship. You don't know how you, your kids are not going to drive you crazy. You don't no, how are you going to make it because the job is failing? You don't know where the next check is coming from. You are you struggling trying to get to that hill to experience God's glory. But you find yourself in the darkest of valleys. Huh. Jesus. There's beat and bruise of our victims. And one of those is by his stripes, we are healed. But see, he had to go through the brutality and the embarrassment and the, the, the tax of the enemy to get stripes. By his stripes, by his obedience, we are healed. Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Nothing. I was talking to a good friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, and he was saying about his hardships that he was going through and how he wanted to get to church, but he felt as though he had to go to work and he. He was he drives he drives a, a gig driver. He wanted to go drive instead of coming to church. And I and, and I was telling him that, you know, I have friends who drive too, but they don't they still make it to church because they still don't lack because they put God first. Matthew six three B says, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness and first, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and his and these things will be given to you. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You won't lack nothing by chasing after God. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack anything. I lack nothing. I shall not want. You gotta chase after God first. Jesus on that cross still understanding his role. Still understanding the crown is coming, but he's going through because of his obedience. You lack nothing. We on the side of God. It's just a matter of time before the blessing comes. Don't pitch your tent in your valley. Wait on the Lord. And he will not only renew your strength, he will give you more than enough that you can even think of or imagine. It's called the abundance of his blessing. Jesus held on. He held on. You've got to hold on. Don't give up. Point two. Drink water. <laughs> drink water. Scripture says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters or quiet waters. I'm on this uh, intermittent fasting, and I have this app that I use. And so I don't eat before 11 a.m. I'm trying to get to noon, but right now, 11 a.m., and I don't eat after 7 p.m. And throughout the course of the day, they say, drink some water to, to fool your hunger. 
Hit me up at 10. Drink some water to fool your hunger. Drink some water to make you feel as though that you are full. Hydrate yourself. I start drinking water the first thing in the morning. I drink some water. I drink this, use this bottle right here. And I have a 40 ounce one of these. This is the Dillon water. This turns your water into uh, uh, that special water, alkaline water. So I drink 40 ounces of this when I first wake up in the morning because uh, this football player <laughs> from football player is 47 years old. He Tom Brady, he gets up first thing he does in the morning is he drinks water. He drinks some alkaline water. He was playing football into his 40s. So I said, I tell you what, I'm gonna get up first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drink some water too, because I'll be like Tom Brady. So I drink 40 ounces of alkaline water every morning when I wake up. I try to drink three of those 40 ounce bottles of water throughout the course of the day. So I can be hydrated, so I can, so I can fight my hunger, so I can get my life back. Here he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside water. I almost say drink water. Psalms, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Psalms 1 and 1 3 says, Blessed is one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stands in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But those who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, they prosper. Drink you some water. The water is that stream that is connected to God. That, that water is, is who, who, who you delight upon and meditate on God's word throughout the course of the day. This water is when you sip on the wisdom of God. This water is when it gives you Life. This water is that eternal water that flows. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside quiet waters where I am restored. Where I am connected with him. Where his anointing flows to a point that I can't even, that's why thoughts become prosperous. My business ideas start to flow. It's because it's right there when God is connected to you, when you are connected to him, when you continuously pour it out and connect with him, he pours it to you. He says, take this cup and let it overflow. It's the overflow that happens when you are connected to God, when you are staying there on your knees. Chasing after him. Jesus on the cross. Go ahead, man. Jesus was on the cross. Jesus was on the cross. And he said, I thirst. He was thirsty for that connection with her, with God. He was thirsty because he didn't feel that connection with God. He felt as though he was being pulled away from his connection. So he said, I thirst. He was thirsty for water that came from the water to the left. He was thirsty for the water that came from heaven. His father. Are you thirsty? I said, get thirsty and drink you some water. Drink you the love that God has for us. Uh, drink you the wisdom that God presents before us. Uh, drink you the peace that God presents before us. Like being a tree planted by still waters who never dries up, whose leaves always are green because they will always prosper. God is your source for your prosperity. Point three. For God's name. For God's name. Verse 3 says these words here. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. For his 
name's sake. God, God is not going to leave you on the wayside. He's going to continue to bless you for his name's sake because he said that he will be with you to the very end of the age. Because he said, I even I am he who blocks out the your trespasses for my own sake, and I remember them no more. He says, I even I am he who blocks out for his name's sake. Isaiah 51 and 2 says, I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that fear mere mortals, human beings, who are but grass? Who do you fear? Why are you fearing human beings? They're just like grass. God is the one that comforts us. And he'll do it for his Name sake. See, God is not a man. The word of the Lord says, God is not a man that he shall lie, nor some of a man that he will change his mind. The words that he sends down, the, the prophecies that he sends down, the promises that he sends down, the scriptures that he sends down have to do what they were sent to earth to do and can't return to him, can't repent, can't return to him void. The word of the Lord says. He'll do it for his name's sake. Jesus on the cross, I can see him. Father, why have you forsaken me? He was really quoting the scripture. He was taking us back to understand that for God's name, he's going to prevail. The enemy can't win, and he wouldn't even know. The enemy knows he can't win. But do you know that? The enemy knows he's been cast down from heaven and, and damned to earth. The, the enemy knows. But do you know? Do you know that God won't leave you stranded? Do you know in your deepest, darkest days, God is going to meet you where you're at your need? Do you, do you understand that you don't have to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself? That God has you right now today? Do you understand that. Hallelujah. I can be excited when I think about the goodness and greatness of God and how he's going to move. Woo! God can get you to a place where your body is so dark that you can't even see your hands before you, but you have enough faith to walk blindly trusting God. Because it's in this darkness, in this blindness that you can't see your way out and God is going to show you your way out. Jesus got his way out. He's on that cross going through. He was going through <laughs> to his way out. Point four. Don't pitch a tent in the valley. Verse. Well, hold on. Hey, don't pitch a tent in the valley. Verse 4 says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, <clears throat> don't pitch your tent in the valley. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they, they, they comfort me. Moses spent 40 years in Israel walking aimlessly for 40 years just to go a few dozen miles to the promised land. They couldn't get to it. They were walking aimlessly through it. But they, when they stopped, they kept going. They pitched the tent, but they didn't stay. They pitched the tent to, to worship God. They didn't stay. I'm saying don't pitch your tent and stay in your valley. Understand you're going through these hard times. Understand that even in America is going through some difficult, some hard times, and more financial hard times are coming. We're just seeing the, the, the just the cusp of it. We're, there's more hard times coming in America. But I'm here to encourage you that you've been through some hard times already as a people. And you're still here. It makes no sense that we still are walking on this in America. It makes no sense if you think about what you've been through 
his people. It makes no sense that what your great grandparents went through, you still are graduating from college. It makes no sense that what your great great grandparents went through, that you own a business that's flourishing. It makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense that you are still not just a survivor, you are thriving. It makes no sense. Because nobody else in the world has gone through what you've gone through, and yet and still you stand. But God. But God. So don't pitch your tent in the valley. Understand you will go through to the next mountaintop where you see God's glory. <coughs> to the next mountaintop where you experience the fullness of God's glory. Keep going. Don't give up. This is your hour to understand that you don't give up. Jesus could have given up. And we would have no Resurrection Sunday. We would have no Easter. We would not have Sunday worship experiences because we would do it on Saturday. We wouldn't have Sunday worship experiences. We worship on Sunday as Christians is because Jesus got up on Sunday. We have Easter services and celebrations for those people who go CMEs, you know the people who CMEs, the Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter worshipers. So we have extended worship experiences on Easter for them, but every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Because Jesus lives. And we go through a course, we want to be reminded that Jesus lives. So keep fighting. Keep going. Don't pitch your tent in the valley because the mountain is right there. I don't think a little wise word of elder told me was no mountain is smooth when you climb it. Because if it was smooth and easy, smooth, you couldn't climb it. If you couldn't get your foot situated to climb, your hands to climb, if it was smooth, you'd just keep falling back down. Even when you go through the valley, you're on your way up the mountain to the promises that God has for you, to, to where God's glory is, where your abundance is, your prosperity is, where your, where your, where your, your, your business is, where, where your, your marriage is, your healthy marriage is. When you get to that mountain, when you see all the promises that God has for you, because you're going to get to that mountain, you'll have to climb this mountain. And there'll be some trouble, some hard times, some difficulties, and some challenges as you put one hand up and the next foot up, as you climb this mountain, you get through the valley, it doesn't mean it's over. Even on the way up to the mountain, you'll have some challenges, but those challenges are making you stronger and getting you closer to what God has for you at the top where the glory is. But you've got to keep going. Keep climbing. Don't give up. Keep marching. Keep singing. Ah. <laughs> keep investing. Keep praying. Keep meditating. Keep believing. Even on your way to your promises. There'll be challenges, but even in the way to the, the promises, there'll be challenges, but just keep on. Keep it on. Don't pitch your tent in the valley. We'll leave you with this. You are anointed. You are anointed for this. You are anointed for this. Verse 5, Psalm 105 says, You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You prepare a table before my enemies. You are anointed for this. You are anointed for this life. You are anointed for the challenges that come before you. You are anointed to succumb those obstacles. You are anointed for victory. You are anointed. God, I declare and decree. If you trust God and walk with him and remain obedient with him, I declare and decree today the promises of God will be fulfilled in 
immediately. But you got to believe because you are anointed for this. He anoints my head with oil. Ah. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He prepares the table before my enemies. The haters are going to hate. And right before them, after you've gone through the embarrassment, right before them, have you gone through the brutality, right before them, have you gone through the beat ups, and right before them, after the failed businesses, right before them, after the failed relationships, right before them, after failing in school, right before them, your enemies will see these things and they will start laughing at you, but that's okay. Because they laughed at Jesus. Spat upon him. Put him upon the throne, doors of his head, and watched the blood drip down. They, they whooped him so brutally with, with, the, with the leather, and then the, at the end of him had these, these shell claws that would dig into his skin. And so as he was being scarred, they spat upon him live. They, 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 they gambled for his clothes. Yeah. They teased him and put him in a, in a robe with a crown of thorns to say, if you are the king of Jews, here is your robe. Here is your crown. They, they, they were embarrassing him. There's people all around who were following him and said, this man was the Messiah. How are they doing this? Peter lied three times. I've been afraid and embarrassed that he claimed who Jesus was to him. Weren't you with him? No, it wasn't me. No, we saw you with him. No, no, Peter said, no, it wasn't me. No, that was the other dude. Embarrassed and scared. But your enemies hated for the hate. Let them hate. These are the promises of God. Before my enemies, he prepared a table so that they can see what God is doing. He's shaping and forming and building you up into the woman and the man of God. He called you to be where he anoints you with fresh oil and his spirit inside of you. And you, now you're being bold and built up. And your chest is coming out and your head is held strong and your arms are back. And now you're the man and woman of God he called you to be. And now when you speak, you speak with thunder and lightning comes out of your mouth because you're prophetically speaking things into existence that or seen by others as not, but now that they are. See, then he says, my rod and your rod, his rod and his staff, they come from me. See, the, uh, in the Old Testament, the battle is not ours. It's whose? Uh, the Lord's. Huh. You, Father, uh, use me as your battle axe, and you go out to battle. Huh. For us, it's for us to be obedient and let God do the work. There is not a war or battle that God has not won, not, not lost. He's never lost. He is never lost. He's like that San Diego State and UConn playing basketball. They, you know, he, he comes in and he's like, I'm going to win. When others count you out, you think you are the Cinderella story. You are the Cinderella story because people look at you and say there's no possible way. But God is. But God is. Don't pitch your tent in the valley. Let this experience, this Resurrection Sunday season, this Easter season be the season where you celebrate the fact that he got up. Just like you. How he was beaten and bruised for our iniquities. How by his stripes we are here. Let these, these, these phrases, these scriptures that we keep hearing over and over again take meaning into your life. You understand that I will come through some hard times. I will experience some difficult times. I will go into the darkest of valleys in my life. The depression, the sadness, the poverty, to, to be impoverished. It's worse than check to check. It's like impoverished where you feel like you are so suppressed and so depressed that you can't come out of your situation. Get to that place and understand that he won't leave you there in your valley. But you got to keep moving. you got to keep believing. you got to continue to walk even though you can't see in the darkest of hours. you got to continue to walk boldly into your faith. 
Faith is, is believing when you can't see. <laughs> Have some faith and trust it. If Jesus had to go through, then you want to go through too. But know that when you go through, you won't go through anything on the level that he went through because he already went through for you. It's just the devil trying to trick us into believing that we ain't going to make it. What God is saying is, you've already made it if you just trust in me. Get to your valley. Get to your victory. From hill to hill, there is a valley, but there's still yet a hill to hill. The promises of God are being shined on by His glory. Get to His glory this week. Get to His glory today. Get to His glory in your life and experience the prosperity of life that God has for you. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand, praise Him. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, hey, 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 we're so excited for what God is doing. Now, there's something you heard today in. You want to give your life to the Lord. You want to be part of the brethren, the sisterhood, the brotherhood of those who believe, those who are standing upon the promise of God, who are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy, with the special gift of the Holy Spirit. If that's you, then who wants to be saved? I want to say this prayer with you today. I don't want to see you end up in hell. I want to see you up in heaven. Why go through this whole year and, and get to this place right now where we're celebrating Jesus being resurrected, being alive, our Lord and Savior is alive and well, and gives this place and still be destined for failure. Hmm. You are successful. So I invite you to be saved today. Say this prayer with me, if you would, please. Father God, I believe and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, that He came, He walked, He lived, He died. He got up. Forgive me my sins. Welcome me in to your kingdom. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer today, you are saved. You are saved. And we celebrate you today. We offer you the right hand of fellowship as well. Be a part of this movement. Be a part of this, this movement called Empowered Living. We are really striving and believing in the promises of God to be fulfilled. Ah. How we are, we stand in agreement, hallelujah, that God is alive and well and flourishing in us. Join us here at the Apollo Ministries as well. It's time to give. We have actually give. We are a giving church. We're a giving church. We host a monthly movie where we make it free to the community for them to come out and celebrate. Just celebrate family, celebrate friends, go on a date, whatever it may be. We give it to the community now as well. We're doing this business with faith where we are working with businesses, the Christian businesses in the community to help them flourish and also to, to increase their prosperity. Just for, and, and so we, I just, we serve. We serve and we're going to continue to serve. And we are able to do so because of your gifts. So we invite you to give today. You can give on our website, theelm.church. You give a tithe or offer of any amount. At the Elm Church. You also can text to give, text 84321 with a dollar amount. You can freely and easily give that way as well. Or, oh, what's the other way? Oh, Cash App. You can Cash App as well. And that is dollar sign the Elm Church, dollar sign the Elm Church. Please give as your heart leads you to give. Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. 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 Let me pray this out today. We're so enthused about this celebration. So enthused to see, uh, I almost called him Pastor Shirley. Pastor Shirley. We are so enthused to see uh, Shirley today. I guess prophetess. I don't know what it is. Uh, minister, prophet, pastor, uh, preacher, Cheryl, uh, with us today. And so excited to have her in our presence. Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for your faith. We thank you for the faith you give to us. We thank you, Father for being the Lord that keeps his word. We thank you, Lord, for sending your son Jesus into the world. We thank you, God, for even smiling upon us, even when we were worthy to be looked upon. We thank you, God, how for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, God, for the power that you rest upon us. We thank you, God, for preparing a table before our enemies and anointing us and protecting
protecting us with your rod and your staff. We thank you, God, today. Ha, for the hills yet to climb and the glory yet to be revealed. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, we pray, and we all say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. This is Pastor Baird of the LD Apollo Ministries. Thank you for joining us here. Oh, oh I made a mistake. Go to dollar sign the elm. Uh, dollar sign the elm to, to give. I think that's it, right? Mm -hmm. I'll end that out. There's three, there's three ways to give. There's three ways to give. It is the elm, right? Yeah. Go to the elm church. That's it, elm church? What did I say? Said you said it right. Oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. You said to get to yourself now. Never mind, never mind. The uh, Elm Church. Uh, I'm Pastor Barrett of the Elm, the Apollo Ministries. Well, thank you for joining us here. Come out and join us online at 10 a.m. or in person at the Airs of Great Cinemas, 9110 Kingsbury Boulevard in the great city of Charlotte, North Carolina. All of this, we love you. We love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. God bless. family, I'm Pastor Barrett Berry of The Elm, The Empowered Living Ministries. Allow me to tell you a little bit about our story. Recently, people were being baptized. Yes, and we haven't even started in-person worship services. God is doing something miraculous here with The Elm. The gospel is being taught. People are being saved and baptized and discipleship is happening. This is exciting. We have four F's, we call them the four F's the pillars, the foundation on which we build and serve our Lord. The first one is faith. We work to empower your faith. We worship with high praise with a biblically taught word directly from the Bible. We believe in expanding the good news of the gospel directly from the Bible with power and with authority and with great excitement. Our worship team is explosive. Our worship leader already has an album out and our Minister of Music has his own album out as well. We take the gospel serious here at the Elm. So, we increase your faith. We're a church that prays. Yes, a church that prays. We believe in praying in the beginning, the middle, and the end. The word of the Lord says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and, and to celebrate him. We pray. We want to be known as a church that prays and one that believes and that miracles come after we pray. And they have. It's been quite a story too. It's been quite an experience to see how lives have been changed through this ministry. Two, we work to empower your families. We believe the nucleus of the family is where children are taught, where men are developed into men, and where women are developed to be women of God as well. And so we work, whatever the shape or form of your family, it could be a single parent family, we want to come alongside you. It could be a family with two parents, we still want to come alongside you. You may even be by yourself and preparing to be a family. We want to come right alongside of you. We believe in increasing and empowering the family nucleus, however it looks. We want to be right there with you. Number three, we believe in empowering your fellowship, yes. We engage the community through service. We are a church that serves, that has servant leadership, that shows what it means to be a believer, a follower of Christ, by how we serve. We see service as part of our fellowship. As well, we engage the community. We start upon this new ministry called A Movie Night with the Elm. And we've done almost, it'll be 10 really soon, of movies free for the community. We use that 
as a way, as a way to, to, to ease the family budget, but also to bring us together in celebration. So we have worship on Sunday and something in the community to offset that as well, to create a balance in how we fellowship with one another. We create friends, lasting friends, lifelong friends. Fourth pillar is this, we work to empower your finances. Originally we started off with Dave Ramsey's program to work on strengthening your budget. That's how we launched the church initially. That was our goal. We've expanded that now. And recently, this past summer, we had a summer camp where youth between the age of 12 and 21 learn about real estate investing. Yes, and also investment clubs. And we'll continue that process on Tuesday evenings starting this fall and going through to the end of spring to train and equip young people on how to manage, grow wealth to move away from generational poverty to a place of generational wealth. We believe in empowering your finances. At the same time, we created a partnership with the same group, Wall, Junior Wall Streeters, to create a program for adults as well. So we'll be able to equip the youth and equip adults with how to manage their wealth, grow health, and to alleviate generation poverty with improving generational wealth. Yes, a holistic ministry, the four F's. We empower your faith, your family, your fellowship, and your finances. We believe that we should experience the glory of heaven as it is in heaven, it shall be right here on earth. And we are trusting God as we disciple people who believe, and who be believers into positions of great faith. How's your faith? How's your prayer life? We ask that every time we come together, because we want to keep pushing and pulling one another to be the best that we can be as servants of our Most High God.